All right, welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there. For our third deck tonight that we're going to be playing through the ranked ladder, uh, we're going to be playing some Orzhov Angel. So we played some Civic Midrange where we were 3-2, and two, and Chris's discard were 5-1, and one, and now we're going to be playing some Orzhov Angels. So basically uh, what we're doing here is we're starting on like, we're on gold 3 now, I believe. After our last two, we started at like the very end of gold. Yeah, we're on gold three, and we're trying to get up to platinum to be able... We got 14 days, not too difficult, but going to try to get up to platinum to be able to um, get the 3D Vrasis Contempt uh, that, that you get for that. And who knows, maybe we'll get a little farther. Um, you know, we'll see. Usually... Here in the stream, if you're kind of new to the stream, usually what we do is we play the constructed events because the constructed events, I like the the format that they have there. You usually play until you win five matches or lose two matches and you, you spend a thousand gold to enter and you win gold uh, based on how well you do. And we've been doing that quite a bit in acquiring gold. And then whenever the next set comes out, we can spend that gold on packs. And, um, and I think it's a, a nice like even playing field for all the different decks because uh, for my channel, I usually play a lot of different decks. If you kind of go through the, the YouTube channel, you can see it's just tons of different decks. And so it's just a nice uh, baseline for every single deck that we're starting. We're spending our 1,000 gold, and we're kind of, you know, on, like, the same uh, system with all the, the decks here. But uh, playing some ranked stuff to, you know, try to get towards the Vrasis Contempt and playing some of my decks that I really like. Um the Simic mid-range Grixis discard and Orzov Angels. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to, I'll try, I'll try Ice Up Sun, um, and always feel free to ask questions uh, with the sideboarding and stuff, and I'll try to always answer as well. Um, so basically, what we have here is Orzov Angels. This is an aggressively slanted Orzov deck. You can see that we have lots of two drops, lots of three drops. That's like where our our curve is really focused on, just playing two and three mana cards getting out ahead of the opponent um, and having our angels to back to back them up uh, if we need to get defensive. Um, a Johnny is an all-star in this deck. It's really good at bringing back Tithe Takers or Takatli Honor Guards or you know basically any of these two drops um, from the graveyard or just making or just like ticking up and putting counters on our, our creatures to kill our opponents faster. You may notice how I have three Adanto Vanguards in the main and three Takali Honor Guards with the fourth of each one in the board. It's a little odd, but I've actually really, really liked that. So there's there's some matchups where Adanto Vanguard's good against. You know, usually like the control decks, the, the decks without creatures, Adanto Vanguard is awesome against. The decks with creatures, especially the creatures with ETB effects, Takali Honor Guard is awesome against those. So you're looking at like Sultai, even Red. Uh, mono red, mono white, even like mono blue has like trickster. Like there's a lot of like random cards that have ETB effects that don't trigger. So, however, like against control, like honor guard's gonna be really bad against decks with like a lot of creatures, vanguard, and the decks that are being really aggressive where you can't really pay the four life. Adanto vanguard's gonna be really bad. So there's times where like it is good to draw them and have them in game one, but you don't really want them against everything. So we get to kind of adjust accordingly, depending on what we're playing against there. Yeah, Resplendent Angel takes over late games. So th this is what Res Resplendent Angel is to take over late games, because that ability, like the the making more 4-4 four, four angels when you gain 5 life, or that uh, ability to make it a 5-5 five, five flying lifelinker, it takes over the late game. So that's what Resplendent Angel does. Even though it's a three drop, it's really like our late game card. Like we're wanting to play Midnight Reaper and History on turn three and everything and, and wait till like the end. We want Resplendent Angel to be like our last card. We want them to use their removal on everything else. This is our, our late late game threat that, that at times can also just be a three mana three three. But it's really powerful at, at winning late games. Um So there we go. So that's our that's our deck. Uh, sideboard, I really like our sideboard. We just have a whole lot of different one-ofs that will kind of come in, in in different matchups. Uh, real versatile of like how we can uh, r really to like tune this deck and tailor it towards like what our opponent is doing. Um, 
but let's let's give it a try. I know last time we played this deck, it it felt really good. Um, and if, if you're watching this, you can find the the YouTube video from two days ago. We played this deck and went five and zero, oh, and the the deck felt really good. And so we're gonna try it some more. I don't think you should use Mark of the Vampire for Resplendent Angel at all. Basically, Mark of the Vampire is the kind of card that is only good. You know, it's going to be good a very small amount of time, and it's only good if you put it on, like, an Adanto Vanguard that you can keep alive or a Resplendent Angel, like, that kind of stuff. But there's just going to be times, like, where Mark of the Vampire is going to be a dead card in hand, or there'll be times where you put it on, like, a Resplendent Angel right away, and then they use a removal spell on it, and you get two for one. And it's those kind of times that you just can't afford to play cards like that. You need your cards... In standard, you need your cards to be good enough to... Um, pulled up on their own. Alright, Blood Crypt. I'm going to lead with a Danto Vanguard. I think this is probably Grixis Control. That's my guess. Obviously it doesn't have to be, but it's my guess is Grixis Control. If this is an aggro deck... Ugh. That's kind of bad for us. Well, we'll try to put enough pressure on them. But Priest can definitely take over games. But with drawing this other Ajani, how I can, like, next turn put counters on these with Ajani's. So we have Priest... Actually, let's just play the Tithe Taker. So we'll have... Something good to sacrifice with the Tithe Taker. Hey, what's up, 619? Uh, I definitely liked that Game of Thrones episode. It was good. It was definitely good. A lot of things happened, but a lot of things that we already knew that was going to happen, basically. Um, you know, just... Not not too much, like, action, but just, like, story-wise, a lot of story storyline things that we knew were what were going to happen. Um, but yeah, it was a good episode. I can't believe there's only five more. There's still so much to cover, and there's only five more episodes, but I guess that's going to be the shortest one. Um... Okay, like the dragon. No, the dragon ride didn't know about that. Oh well. Okay, yeah, no spoilers. Ah. So. <laughs> that that was the shortest episode in season eight, though, right? So like that was the show the shortest one. So looking at like the runtime, that one was fifty four minutes, and they. I guess it was listed all the other ones. Hmm. I, mean, I guess I should probably just be playing Lyra. This one's looking pretty good for us. What are they, like, do they just have, like, like, what are they doing? Why don't they just spend the two mana on this? I don't, I'm kind of confused with what's going on here. With Tithe Taker in play, they can't spend the two mana on my turn to do that. Huh. 
All right, so this is this could be a tough matchup. Basically, <clears throat> just Priest of the Forgotten Gods. That that's certainly a card to be scared of, for sure. What is this Kaya going to do? I'm not exactly sure what, but it'll probably do something. No, Tithe Taker effects do stack. Yeah, so if you have two Tithe Takers in play, then it costs two more mana. They do stack. Honor Guard, Bell Hunt is not a good combo. I know, I know. It's not a good combo. But we have it. Okay, five card hand. Priest down. That thing's just going to deal damage to me. Oh, well. <clears throat> yeah, I should just kill that on my turn. I'm just going to deal damage to me. So I wouldn't mind drawing a land here and being able to play Kaya and also have cast down. So, Tithe Taker cast down. This Kaya isn't looking great. They haven't had any one-drops. For it. There's a one drop. The crueler the opponent, the sweeter the victory. Wait. Yeah, we're just gonna have to minus. I hate it when the dead won't stay. I I math wrong immediately in my head. I was you know, it goes up to four right away. I was thinking it was gonna go up to five, and so I could tick up and have it go to five one turn and then and then uh still minus, but no it goes up to four, so you cannot tick up first, so we just have time. to minus. Alright, well we have have the battlefield stable. We'll see if that last card in hand was another removal spell. Yeah, not surprised. I don't really want to contempt either of these things. That wasn't a great time to draw a contempt. I guess I'm contempting this Fireblade Artist. Hmm. This kind of feels bad. Alright, well, 
gonna draw Seraph with the scales. I'll take history. It's a good one. <clears throat> not bad, not bad. Hopefully they just have a bunch more lands over there. Nope. Ow. Right, I'll take Resplendent Angel or Lyra Dawnbringer. I'll take either one. Remodi is a great draw for them. Yeah, that's really good. Want to make it harder for them to activate Priest of Forgotten Gods. So we're just doing that trade there. Mm. No, we needed need more angels. Wow. Looks like we're going to game three. Defense. Defense. All right, never mind. little guys Ooh. the spawn of mayhem got us A second of Johnny in here. I do you like how it, I really like a Johnny bringing back Tide Taker? And maybe we can pump up some creatures to be above like uh, Skewer the Critics or whatever. Now Vanguard is really, really bad against Judith and Footlight Fiend and other things like that. I don't know. I sh Maybe I shouldn't be playing the Godless Shrine there. Maybe I should be playing the, the planes. Yeah, because I could just cast down this priest and then untap him, Kaya. Alright, that, that was my bad. I should have had the... I heard you had some dead I should have just been able to cast to down that priest dead? earlier. Or just use my mana better. Don't have to worry about anything right now. That... Right as I was playing that Goblet Shrine, I was like, I shouldn't be doing this. Play it a little quickly there. Try that again. I dare you. All right, let's kill that. So now that we can, now we can exile it, gain some life. Not the worst. At least our, you know, the Tithe Taker gets lava coiled, but at least the Bell Hunt I'm gonna make isn't gonna get lava stairs. coiled now. And I'm gonna lead with that because I think Bell Hunt's a less important card than like Resplendent Angel or Seraph. But yeah, getting the discard out right away is is nice. 
Right down to one card. I still at 21, so not doing so bad. No, that was bad. Oh, that's also bad. All right, row down to 13. I would like to draw land. I want my opponent to draw land, and I want to draw land. No removal, no removal, no removal. No, third lava coil. Ugh. All right, let's clear those up. All right, so they have two cards still. Hopefully Lyra is better than their one card. No more removal. No more removal. No. They were holding a choop. Ugh. This is bad. Esthetic, thank you so much for that Twitch Prime sub. Getting the high potes in the channel. Enjoy your awesome emotes. And we're at 124 bits. Or no, it's, a, it's 128. Be the bit part. All right, that, that's going to deal another damage. All right, Lyra Dawnbringer. Vigilance. We need a Lyra Dawnbringer. Not more lands. We're so close to dying. We're so close to winning. We're so close to dying. This is just so close. Either way, we won! Woo! Oh. I'm so close. Seraph of the Scales got us there. Whoops. All right, we are now gold tier. Two. As the tick says, just started MTG Arena about a week ago. Thanks for the good commentary. It's been helping. Any tips for getting started? I already bought the starter pack. Okay, so good. You got the starter pack. That's definitely good. Um, really, I guess. Yeah, you know, I guess it kind of depends on like what your goals are and everything. If you're just trying to get as many cards as possible while spending the least amount of money as possible, I would recommend getting a a good best of one deck, a good aggressive best of one deck, probably just probably model red, and 
or mono white, like one of those two. Um, those are probably like pretty, pretty easy to put together and play the best of one queue um, with those and just kind of jam those. You can jam a lot of games and, and I'm talking about like the, the constructed event that costs 500 gold to enter. And if you can, that's like a way that you, if you can consistently do pretty good in those, you can get uh, the card rewards and get new gold with that kind of stuff. I mean, if if you are just, you know, a new player that's trying to build their account that doesn't want to spend very much money, that's, I mean, that's just the best thing to do. Um, it really is. Yeah, Merfolk is the best of the starter decks. Yeah. Alright, Soul Tie. This is Soul Tie is like a matchup we don't really want to face. This is one like we like facing the different ends of the spectrum. We like facing basically everything else. This is probably probably the deck I want to face the least. I'm not sure. I don't know of a, a deck I would not rather face than Soul Tie. Crimson Coven getting the tier three sub for 18 months, y'all. Let's get a bunch of hype in the in the chat there for the tier three sub. Thank you so much, balance Crimson comes. Coven. Tier three subs knock off six subscribers off of a sub battle countdown, so that gets us down to 118. All right. Dealing with Vivian is going to be annoying. I'm a survivor. Go to Sarah. Meet my newest friend. Kaya exiling Lanor Elf is really not a bad course of action either. But that's what I would do if they didn't have the Vivian in play, that we just have to pressure the Vivian. So, all right, come on, draw a land. Ugh. Really need a land so we can start double spelling. You know, if we could cast down that thing and play Kaya. Ah, that have been really good. Strike me and you strike nature. No one knows the wilds like I do. Yeah, don't don't think we're winning this. They just have way too many cards over there. And Crisis is too good. to do better than that. Yeah, they are two crisis fewer, you can't but stop Vivian keeps on going. I mean, look at this. Like, they have, well, like, nine cards in hand. I just can't beat nine cards. And having to deal with this Vivian. And, like, by the time we finally deal with the Vivian, they probably just have another one.
just had a pretty good hand. You know, they had Chupacabra on turn three, and then Vivian on turn four, on, and they were on the play. And we are going to be dead. <sighs> Not dead yet. J Light Drum a couple more. Hey, Gatsby also with the tier three resub as well. Y'all, we need to get a ton of hype here. Crimson Coven and Gatsby with those tier three resubs. Y'all are amazing. Our sub battle countdown are all the way down to 112. Now, thank y'all very much. Welcome here anymore. So we get those things out of there, I guess. Maybe they just don't have finality. Maybe they just don't have finality at all. You never know. You never know. Okay. They did have finality. So Honor Guard in, a Johnny in, Reaper in, Contempt, Mortify, Cast Down, probably a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, I want to take out Histories. This is a uh, not a not a great matchup for us. Not a great one. Yeah, we could play some duresses. I mean, duress we have two cards that we want to hit is Vivian and Finality. Those are like the main things we want to hit. But basically to to win this game, we have to kind of win it quickly where we just curve out kind of thing like that's that's really how we win this is just curving out really well and so we could play duress but they can if we if we're just like playing duress in our turns and they can just kill us with their creatures kind of thing I'm gonna play one over Alira. We'll have that one duress, just to mess him up. Got that one to mess him up. Well, if we get lucky and draw lands, we could curve out here. Tithe Taker, Midnight Reaper, a Johnny. That's a that's a pretty good curve. If they just play um, Wild Growth Walker, Jade Light Ranger, we lose, but. Ha! Huh. We don't we don't lose yet. Lands, lands. We gotta pay for these lands. All right, there's a land. One more. One more. One more. We need a Johnny. One more. Come on, get this land. One more. Baby, we did it. 
do not have to. I will lend you my strength. Attack. Because <clears throat> a Johnny helps our creatures get out of finality range, especially to Kali Honor Guard. Got to get it out of finality range. And we're also putting pressure on the opponent now. No. All right, well, that's bad. All right, black mana source. Be strong. We don't have the black mana to contempt this wild growth walker. But we did draw a land for Lyra, so let's just just go with that. They get to gain. Hopefully, just three life. Hopefully, no Jade Light Ranger here. All right, six life. You are capable of more than you assume. Attack. Alright, draw an extra card. Hopefully we draw a Swamp. Swamp will let us contempt this Wild Growth Walker and play a Tithe Taker. Swamp. Ooh. Even better. So I'm going to let them think that they have their Wild Growth Walker. And so maybe they spend mana on Jade Light or whatever, but I think we got this one. So we're going to a game three. We're going to hopefully have the same kind of curve out with Takali on our guard early, plus a Johnny. That's that's how we can win games. Honor guard slow him down quite a bit, and a Johnny make our threats really big and kill them quickly. So it's that combo. Slow them down, speed us up. It's hard to do on the draw, of course. So what do you want to do, Turbo Mollusk? Takali is so good. That's our plan. Hmm. They're mulliganing. Alright, well... History into history can win games, but it can also just get outclassed easily. So we want to not see... So no Wild Growth Walkers, please. No Wild Growth Walkers, please. No Wild Growth, no Wild Growth. Okay. Good. That's a good one. Fight makes me stronger. Turn three, Vivian on the play. How are we supposed to compete with that? The next turn they get a four-four Hydra Crisis. Oh, so it's going to be like that, huh? And 
And I don't have any removal, so we have nothing to deal with this 4-4 crisis right now. Which means that we're probably not going to be able to kill this Vivian. The wilds are my shield. Yeah, drawing a contempt would be nice. I think we have one contempt in the deck. So if we draw that one singular contempt, that'd be good. And we're dead. It wasn't a finality there. Well, good news is they did not activate Vivian. That's kind of good news. survive you'll see so if they had if they had finality they're probably just blocking with the other land war elf also and keeping vivian alive right like if their plan is just finality this turn that's why i'm going with the tithe taker there wherever i go i'm going to make that disappear I don't think they have finality. Yeah, so they, they just trumped with one elf. Which is odd. Be in this I'm other crisis. Yeah, I don't know how I'm being this 6 6 crisis. And we can't get angel tokens when we can't attack. Or a seventh, you know, because they can just block. Could use Archer Varaska. Don't we have an Archer Varaska in this deck? Yeah, we do. We need that for one of our, our lands. Not looking good. Oh, 
draw a Lyra Dawnbringer. Ugh. Because they kept a cast down. If we draw, like, a Lyra... I don't know, maybe we have a little bit of a chance. But that's too much. Too much damage. Well, we put up a good, a good fight. You know, we lasted three games and everything. Into, like... <clears throat> What's probably our worst matchup. Put up a good fight. We have faced a lot of Sultai today in the ranked tier. I think that's our fifth time to face Sultai. Five, six, seven, eight. Played 13 ranked matches, and I think, I think we've seen five, five Sultai. And three other blue greens, uh, with one one reclamation, and then two of the that blue green thief deck. We're playing some ranked right now to try to get to try to get the contempts. Led with Tithe Taker on turn two because playing Tithe Taker on turn two would mean that my opponent would not be able to counter a Splendid Angel coming down on the next turn. So did that in order for, for Splendid Angel to come down into play. Yeah, if you get to platinum, the the reward at platinum is getting um, is getting the three D art contempt the whatever it's called the card style something like that. Cosmetic, the Contempt Cosmetic. Alright, our Angels. Do not want to deal with our two Angels, I guess. So, Vanguards come on out. One Honor Guard out. Duresses in cast down one all this removal um, the ground is just not very important so midnight reapers are out and a Johnny's usually pump up things on the ground this is what we did before um, we want all of our like all the interaction for them so we got all these removal spells we have the duresses that help take counter magic and we basically want to own the skies with our angels so we don't need like our midnight reapers and stuff like that keeping the two keeping two honor guards in to stop trickster so like if we have these things in the air so like they can't like trickster my seraph and not have it have death touch and that kind of thing yeah sell the wreckage could be a cyborg card for the soul time matchup that's a that's a possibility. I I kind of like our, our sideboard against everything else, though. And even with Settle, I don't know if Settle changes the matchup just a ton. Double Curious Obsession and a Spell Pierce and a Dive Down. Jeez. Wow. Well... Please don't draw a land. We got two draws here. Please do not hit a land drop. No land, no land, no land. All right, no land. Whew. I 
I could shock in to cast duress. I'm just gonna wait. I think I need to take the dive down to be able to kill this Tempest Chin easier. And I just need to <clears throat> throw out history into counter magic. You need to just have history trade with the counter spells. Land would have been really nice where we could have got to re resolve Resplendent Angel too, but I don't hate drawing a Mortify. Um, okay. I'd rather that get countered than Resplendent Angel. Ooh, great draw, great draw. Because that means Resplendent Angel resolves now. Yeah, really great draw there. So we gotta hope they don't have Trickster now. Because if next turn, if I attack <clears throat> with Resplendent Angel and activate it, they just have Trickster, it turns back into a 3-3, and they can double block with the two Tricksters and just trade one Trickster for Resplendent Angel. And that's, so it's basically, if they have Trickster, that that's going to mess me up. But if they don't have Trickster, Resplendent Angel is going to mess them up. So I don't know if I'm actually supposed to attack here. I don't think so. Because we are making them... We are making them keep... All this mana up. I could be attacking with Tithe Taker, maybe? Ugh. Dang it. Now, activate before attacks, it still it loses the abilities. Tithe Taker makes it lose the ability. So, you, if you activate before attacks and they Tithe Taker, it still doesn't. Basically, how they punish me is if they just had a Tithe Taker, they kill my Resplendent Angel if I attack. But. Obviously, how that all worked out. I guess I should have just been attacking. It does not get the plus two plus two anymore. No, that's that's a build. It loses the plus two plus two. That's that's you know part of the ability. It would be a three three. We got mana and a dress.
I don't, under don't understand. So they have they have one two two on the battlefield. They play a trickster. They have two two twos on the battlefield. My angel is a three three with no ability, so it has, does not have flying. Nothing. They block the three three with two two twos. The three three dies and one two two dies. So basically, the trickster would be Doomblade. It would just be two mana removal. Well, with Tide Taker, it costs three mana, but it would just be a removal spell. If I if I attacked in with it. You, it doesn't matter if you activate first. You can activate it, and you make it a 5-5, five five, and then you attack, and then they trickster it after you activate, and it loses all abilities. It turns back into a 3-3 three three without flying with, with nothing. It's just a 3-3. Three three. But obviously, if they don't have... If they don't have Trickster at all, then, you know, I was playing that, you know, obviously really bad, because if they don't have Trickster, then it's great. It does not remain a 5-5. Five five. It loses the plus two, plus two also. Angel loses everything. It turns into just a 3-3. Three three. So maybe I was just playing too scared there by not attacking with the angel. I thought I could wait to try to find like one other card, but we drew a couple lands in a row with that resplendent angel. Just drew some lands in a row and then, so we didn't really have anything else. Um, and then, you know, obviously the entrancing melody. I didn't really have entrancing melody on my radar nearly as much as trickster. But very likely I could have won the game two by activating, you know, as long as they did not ever have the trickster in hand. Honor Guard does stop Venerate Luxodon. That's that's the one thing it can do in this matchup. So I hope hope they don't have a turn here where they get to play Venerate Luxodon before I get Honor Guard out. Ugh, gross. Hoping they were going to do other things first. Let's just kill that. Play Honor Guard now. Stop any future ones. I like killing that so we get to put get a lot of damage in there to get a clock on there. So seven permanents. Is this Benelish Marshall? Ooh, unbreakable formation. Formation's pretty good. Making those two fives. That's pretty big. I'm gonna see if I can sneak in any damage here. Alright, four damage, not bad. Now, am I paying four life to keep this Vanguard alive?
I don't think so. So my, my plan here is just to play Seraph with the scales. Um, yeah. So we're, we're just not getting through on the ground anymore. Against two two fives. So I don't need that Vanguard anymore. Vanguard did his job. Dealt a lot of damage. All right. Um, stream in for another half hour to hour. Somewhere in there, at least a half hour. So similar to mono blue with our sideboarding, getting in all this removal. I I like Bell Hunt a lot more here because being on the ground uh, is you know it's still valuable. It's not really valuable against mono blue, but it is valuable here. Bell Hunt and Honor Guard, of course, don't match up well. They don't play very well together. I could play, I could throw a duress in here too. I don't want tons of duresses, it's not a good card to draw later. Yeah, so I was doing some, yeah, Honor Guard and, and Bell Haunt's not a, not a, that's a non-bow, but I'm actually doing some ranked today. So not doing like the regular leagues. Um, going towards, uh, you know, started at gold four today, we're at gold two right now, and trying to get to platinum in order to get the 3D art Got for Vras's Contempt. Got to get to platinum by the end of the, the month. That's like the um, reward for doing that. All right, going to go and take History of Benalia. Could see taking Unbreakable Formation also, but History is just a, a great card. We'll just take that thing. So even though we're one and two right now with Orzhov Angel, still go, still getting some games in with it. All right, like the Godless Shrine, get to play Resplendent Angel next turn. Yeah, we get a, a nice curve out here. Duress, Honor Guard, Resplendent, Seraph. Good curve. Hey, you're welcome, Steve. Good job, you hit platinum, way to go. Way to go, getting some high boats in there. All right, so they're using this unbreakable formation to be able to flip Adanto. I'm gonna hold her splendid angel back because if they have like a conclave tribunal that would get rid of Seraph. Then I wouldn't have like my Resplendent Angel to check these two twos. Of course, I'm not, I'm not blocking the Dauntless Bodyguard with the Resplendent Angel, but I want to be able to check the two twos. All right, draw a land, please. We draw a land, we win. Draw a land. Draw a land. Hooray! We drew the land. We drew the land. And then both those angels gain lifelink, get bigger. Oh, I guess I was tier three. Now we're back to tier two. We were at tier two before that last loss. All right, back where we started, two and two. Alright, so if you 
like talking magic and you want to maybe talk about different brews you have, what decks you're playing at FNM, decks you're playing at tournaments, um, talk about War of the Spark cards, any of that kind of stuff, join our Discord community. Free to join. It's a nice little kind of chat room ish kind of thing with the different channels in there uh, for different things. Added a bunch of channels yesterday. So, kind of starting to grow that now. So, feel free to hop on in there and talk about what decks you're playing, what you're having success with. If you have questions, maybe, about your decks of wanting some suggestions. Perfect spot there. There's the link for the Discord community. If you're watching this later on YouTube, also, you can find the link in the YouTube description. So, we got the new set coming out. Perfect time to be bouncing ideas off each other. We have a Game of Thrones room in there, too, that has spoilers and everything. So, you know. But if you want to talk Game of Thrones. Great place to do it. All right, so we're sur we're definitely hoping for no Cry of the Carnarium. That's the the card that gets rid of a Danto Vanguard that we do not want our opponent to have. <laughs> you ended a game at 750, and the opponent was at zero life. What were you playing at 750? I'm guessing like March of the Multitudes, a bunch of lifelinkers like that. Oh, Primal Amulet. Flipped and then Revenge Revival to keep doubling your life total. Oh, that's that's awesome. We don't have to worry about Absorb here because of Tithe Taker. They could have Negate. Bleh. They did have Negate. Bleh. And we don't need to worry about settle. Hmm. Because playing Lyra is just kind of playing into Absorb there. So better not. It's best not to let them gain the life. That's really annoying. Cast down, worst card in our deck. You were about to be at 1500, but the opponent died. No. Like we're dead. Came close. Trust that me. moment of You'll craving later. got us, and you need to take a time out. The negate on the Kaya was really good timing too. And we're not drawing anything that does anything. Thanks, Karachata. Yeah, glad you like the new thumbnails. Yeah, Yud made some new thumbnails. And yeah, I think they look awesome also. Get you back out of here. All right, so taking out these removal spells. <clears throat> How many Mortifies do I want? Oh, Honor Guard comes on out. And then Lyra. Lyra is just expensive, five mana. Um... Usually just a one for one. I'm not sure if I want all four of these mortifies. Oh, let's get a contempt in. There we go. That's better. Bell haunt's like not that bad. 
like making them discard a card and everything. It's not it's not that bad. Is it is it better than anything here? Maybe it's better than Resplendent Angel in this matchup, honestly. Let me do that. Not over Seraph. Seraph is great. Seraph. Seraph doesn't come out against anybody ever, right? Like, does. Yeah, like, Seraph just never comes out. This is a good curve. I can take this. I can uh, take this to the bank. Tithe take it. Yeah, Mortify hits us Kanta, which is very important. Game one. Post board like this, they usually have more things for Mortify to hit. Like, they could have Lyra. They could have... Um, Thief of Sanity, Hostage Taker, all that kind of stuff. So there's... there's Mortify is usually better post board than what it is game one. Game one, it's basically only as Kanta. But post board, it actually has some uses. Wow, that is... That was the worst card that we could possibly see. Hope we draw this Mortify. This Hostage Taker really is a card you need to Mortify. Uh, no. Alright, looks like we're going to lose. Bleh. Man, Cry the Carnarium. Into Hostage Taker. It's like the best possible and the best possible. Just hoping they don't have black mana now. For death touch. For that thing. Gotta take that to fairy. <sighs> it's basically like every <laughs> every turn. They just have like the worst possible take for us. Every turn. Wow. That was that was a beating. Ugh. So yeah, I kind of wish I would have just kept the third mortify in there, but oh well. All right, Hawkeye, you gonna bring some luck to us? You gonna get us an untapped land here? Yeah, we could have played Angel on three instead of Midnight Reaper. Sure. Midnight Reaper is just such a better card to have in play there, though. But yeah, against specifically against Cry of the Carnarium. Yeah, I guess Resplendent, you know, Resplendent Angel is definitely better there, but. Alright, gonna get Honor Guard in play. 
stop any more ETB effects, like any more Chain Whirler effects, anything like that. So expecting my opponent to lightning strike the honor guard. So that Vyoshino Pyromancer will deal two damage to me. Possible I should just be chumping with Tithe Taker. Possible. But I like having the Tithe Taker be able to check the Vyoshino Pyromancer pretty well. Because like even if they have a Chain Whirler the next turn to kill the 2-1, we'd still have the 1-1 one, one that blocks the Pyromancer. And I think next turn I'm likely going to be playing Kaya, start gaining life. Like next turn, like spend one mana for Vigilance and then also Kaya. So this is likely Chain Whirler next next turn. Yeah, so like the only reason to shock there is when you have Chain Whirler. They probably have Wizard's Lightning, I guess, also. Oh, man. So if they go Wizard's Lightning, Seraph, then Chain Whirler. It's really bad for me. So I was just gonna be chump blocking with the Midnight Reaper, but I wanted to get an, you wanted to play that to chump block to look for more lands. Am I chumping with Seraph of the Scales also here? I 
This chain roller has been such a big problem for me. Playing Kaya next turn, I guess. And really hope they don't have another Chain Whirler. These tokens. Alright, good. <laughs> I like a good fight. Notice I didn't say fair. Something banished. Funny, that's what I do. All right, go, Kaya, go. All right, good job, Kaya. Usually I'm better at dodging. I had guild business to attend to anyway. And bring in the dawn. And then even if, even if they kill the Lyra Dawnbringer here somehow, uh, we still have like the four flyers. All right, Vanguard's out. Um, dress, cast down, contempt, Kaya, mortify, bell haunt. Basically, sideboarding just like mono blue for the most part, except for we do want the bell haunts in this matchup. So what three cards am I not playing? I'm not playing, maybe I don't play four Duress. Maybe I cut a couple of Resplendent Angels. Resplendent Angels do have the ability to take over later in the game though. Like Honor Guard blocks pretty well and stopping Chain Whirler is important. I think I do want all this, this removal uh, you know, killing Experimental Frenzy, really important. Um, yeah, the Resplendents can have lifelink later on, too. It can't just, it can't be history that I'm cutting, is it? I don't know. Like, all these cards are good. I guess we could trim Tithe Taker, I guess. It does really good at, at stopping them early, though. But maybe we do. Maybe we take out a Tithe Taker. And I'm going to take out a Resplendent and a Duress. And I guess the second duress. No, I actually really like Mortify. Because like I said, like destroying Spear Model Frenzy, really, really important. Mortify does that. But then also, as we saw that game, Chain Whirler just like took over that game. Just like having the removal spell for a Chain Whirler is pretty important as well. Yeah, Duress is like the dead card later on where it's it's okay, it's okay to start with. But it's not a good draw later in the game. And really glad we have two Mortifies against the Moldify because whenever they're Moldifying, it's basically... It's basically Frenzy or Bust. And hopefully Mortify means Bust. Yes, Duress is good against blue counters, yep. It is. We haven't seen this Archiver Rosca today. Nice of you to join us. I 
do want to save Mortify for Frenzy. We are one permanent away from... Activating Arch. And now we can activate Arch. So we're just going to sit back and do that. Okay. Don't want to deal with the Arch of Araska. Three and three. Okay. So let's let's play one more match. Alright, good night, bed or good night after wizard. Um let's play one more match here. This is game seven of the World Series here. We're three and three. We're tied up. Let's get our game seven of the World Series, see if we can win this. In fact, let's go with our final boss playlist. We haven't played the final boss playlist yet today. Let's see if we can get that 4-3. Triple History of Benalia. Hopefully that's good and hopefully we get there. Hopefully we get there as in mana wise. One more mana? Okay, good. Um, no, let's save cast down. So I was thinking like, alright, so they play Jade Light. We cast down it, then untap and start playing histories, but... Oh, it's Thief of Sanity. Dang it. Dang it. Alright, well we're going to have to cast down that. Oh, I got really punished for not, for not, you know, playing my planes. Wanted to save the life. Got really punished there. So I wanted to save like a cast down for a Hydrocrasis. That's that's my thought, was that like Hydrocrasis was going to be like we have one removal spell. Crasis is going to be the big problem. Hey, Hawkeye, we got the game one against our our worst matchup. How we talked about before, the one that we don't want to face. Sultai. I don't like I don't like Kaya against Sultai. I think Kaya is. Overrated here. Actually, it's pretty easy. Just yeah, Titaker just gets outclassed. I, maybe it, well, it's what makes a Johnny so good though. Kaya is good against find, but it's not that good against find. Like, it exiles two things. It's hard to protect Kaya. And it's, it's per yeah, it's hard to attack, or sorry, it's hard to protect Kaya and, and have Kaya activate multiple times in a deck like this. Where we don't, we're not just like filled with removal and everything. Chicken pots pie. Thank you so much for that sub. Getting the hype in the channel there. Enjoy all the awesome emotes, and I really do appreciate that support. Well, I mean, this could be Vivian next turn. Could cast down a land or elf to keep Vivian from happening. 
but Vivian will just happen the next turn anyway, and we still won't be able to beat it that turn, so hoping they just have a bunch of explore creatures that honor guards can the honor guard could shut down. Yeah. Agree with you there, prep coin. With saying denying find value isn't really a top concern in these sorts of matchups, even as Esper Control. Because, like, a, like, when you're playing Sultai, you can usually play find around Akaya anyway and all that kind of stuff. And This is getting to be too many lands here. <clears throat> too many lands here, Hawkeye. I'll take this. I'll take this trade. I'll take that trade trade very much. So we saw the Uber Geek have a negate earlier and so I think it could be likely that they have another negate here and so I want to cast the cast down first see if they use negate on it hmm they did not It's certainly possible they only have lands and explore creatures in hand. That's certainly possible. Just three cards there. At least they're not casting finality the next turn, though. Wow. We're not really beating that. Well, I mean, we may. Do not fear, my friend. I wish you only the best. All right, and attack. Strength is born of struggle. If we're going to draw a land, I would like to draw Arch of Araska, if it's going to be a land. Arch of Araska could be a pretty good one. Ugh. 
come to me. Well, Vivian is really big trouble. Oh my gosh. The trophies are supposed to help us not draw lands. I've seen things that would break someone like you. So we have one contempt that we could draw. To get rid of this Vivian. Okay, good draw. At least makes Vivian minus to destroy the Dawnbringer. So, you know, it's harder for Vivian to ultimate if it has to minus. Draw and fire. And that's, you know, a turn of them not getting any cards. Oh, no. The Crab Warriors. So this looks like Explorerless Sultai for everything we've seen. We haven't seen any Explore creatures. We've seen Incubation Druid, Growth Chamber Guardian, and, and Thief of Sandy last game. So I'm thinking that Takali Honor Guard's not actually going to do anything. So I think we sideboard out Honor Guards. And they have counter magic. Let's get these duresses in. And honor guard out. Three duresses in. I don't need all these cast downs and mortifies as much. Honestly. Let's let's trim a couple mortifies. Maybe I'll try the Kayas. Krasis seems to be a really big part of their game plan. No, let's get this other Midnight Reaper. Let's do that. No. All right. Oh, maybe I should be playing a Danto Vanguard. I like um, regular Sultai better than Explorerless myself. Yeah, but honestly, with, if they're not playing the Explore creatures, actually, I probably should have a Danto Vanguard in here. It's still going to be difficult to beat their hand. I mean, they just have a ton of spells, and we have a ton of lands. It's going to be difficult to win. That's a no no. If I attack with Midnight Reaper, they get to just activate Growth Chamber Guardian.
Wild animals I like. People? No. <laughs> Get that out of here. I kind of wanted to make them finality away their creatures also. So, <clears throat> what do I want to mortify? Not bad. I could honestly see just killing this incubation nice. druid and, and making them have a whole lot less mana, honestly. Let's do that. Sure, they have the, the Growth Chamber Guardian uh, train going, but without that six mana. Back-to-back -back history, Benalia. Really nice. This is the comeback. Our opponent was really hasty on that crushing canopy. Them playing that crushing canopy when they did really helped us out. We got to resolve Resplendent Angel. They didn't have that. They weren't able to kill it, so then they have to, like, Vivian kill the Resplendent Angel. And we won. All right, four and three for Orzov Angels. Got there. So still overall a kind of a disappointing showing for Orzov Angels with the three losses. We lost to like regular Sultai earlier, which as we talked about, that one's like a tough matchup and okay. We lost to Mono Blue and that one, that one I was disappointed about for sure. Uh, game two was real close, and I, ba I basically made a judgment call to not activate my Resplendent Angel and be attacking with Resplendent Angel because I was scared of a Tithe Taker. Sorry, because I was scared of a, a Merfolk Trickster. Uh, but then they ended up having... And so like I had like two turns of not attacking, maybe even three turns. And then they had Entrancing Melody to steal it, and I wasn't really doing anything about that. And so... Don't know if they had the trickster or not. You know, they had cards in hand. They weren't playing anything and that kind of stuff. That was a disappointing loss. And then we also lost to uh, something else. Oh, Esper Control, where Esper just, like, had perfect card every single turn. So that kind of happens. You know, like, Cry of the Carnarium and then and then Hostage Taker. And, and then we duress a Teferi. They draw a Teferi. It was just... It was tough. I think overall we're actually not that bad against es against Esper. Like that's a matchup I, I don't mind facing. Um, really like a Danto Vanguard, Tithe Taker, Midnight Reaper, a History, a Johnny. You know, like that kind of stuff. And then also with Duress is there. Uh, Sarah for the Scales also is a problematic card for Esper. But Cry the Carnarium, that's the one card that it's really tough for us to beat when we have those kind of cards. And they had Cries. But. So overall, we played three decks here tonight for ranked matches. Did pretty good. 3-2-5-1-4-3. Uh, Grixis Discard having the best showing, but they also, also kind of played some, some pretty good matchups with Grixis Discard. Um, but yeah, good, good day of playing ranked. We moved from gold four to gold two. So, you know, we're getting there. Only a couple, only a little bit more to go to get to platinum. Um... So there we go. All right, so if you're watching this video later on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed it and hope you hit the subscribe button over there. But thanks for watching some Orzov Angels, and I'll see you for the next one.